In this Wrestle Talk news, WWE fire back at AEW. CM Punk to New Japan. This most recent show confirmed. Jay White's potential WWE future elimination chamber backstage notes and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Oh yeah, had a really nice tweet from Steve from going in raw recently. What a guy. I didn't mention contract tampering, you did. Support Wrestle Talk. As one would imagine, the wrestling world is talking about one thing and one thing alone at this point in time. This Sasuke special Canadian Destroyer to the floor. On the apron here and cartwheel. Oh! But if they're not talking about that, they're probably talking about Sami Zayn failing to capture the Universal Championship from Roman Reigns at Elimination Chamber in Montreal. You can watch Ollie Davis's full review of that show right now on this very channel, and we reviewed it in a longer form type situation over on the WrestleTalk podcast. One man who probably wasn't watching Elimination Chamber though is AEW President Tony Khan. And I'm only presuming he wasn't because he hasn't tweeted about what we're going to talk about here. And you know he probably would. Friday Smackdown saw an appearance from MMA and pro wrestling journalist Eric Ariel Helwani to build up the Zayn Reigns match for the pay-per-view. Tony Khan seemed less than thrilled by this, fueled by Tony and Helwani's run-in on the MMA Hour podcast last October, where Khan refused to answer questions about an ongoing legal matter following Brawl Out. Yeah, Tony, why wouldn't you answer questions about a legal matter you couldn't talk about? It further highlighted how just prior to that, Helwani had done an interview with Triple H that was basically just a fluff piece to promote WWE, where he didn't ask any questions or inquire about the goings-on with their own legal matters regarding Vince McMahon and his stepping down from WWE. Khan tweeted of Helwani being on SmackDown, You're a fraud, Helwani! You're as legitimate a reporter as Tony Schiavone! It seemed to be all in jest, especially when Helwani responded, Thanks for watching, old friend. Can't wait for our next chat. Also, don't listen to the snowman, Shivani. You're a legend in my books. But then Khan ended that conversation with, Good luck with the unbiased journalism. It all seemed rather unnecessary, and is another example of TK blowing up on Twitter and his detractors ridiculing him for it. I don't know if he thought this would get people on his side, but as Trevor Dame so eloquently put on the Bluebird app, if you like Tony, this makes you like him more. If you dislike him, it makes you dislike him more. I don't see this changing minds. And it certainly didn't change the minds of those within WWE. Helwani was also on Elimination Chamber last night, both in the crowd with GSP and on the pre-show. And WWE used these moments to take shots at AEW's head honcho. Cole quipped when Helwani was shown in the crowd, the unbiased journalist Ariel Helwani, who asked all the important questions, whether you want to answer them or not. And Pete Rosenberg introduced Helwani to the kickoff panel, saying he is a man who is respected by anyone with any intelligence. Because if there's one man who knows a lot about integrity and intelligence, it's Pete Rosenberg. Usually WWE shots at AEW are kept behind the scenes. They put on shows head to head. They allegedly contacted advertisers to get them pulled their slots following the Nick Gage Chris Jericho match. They reportedly leaked Fast Nationals to make AEW Rampage his ratings look bad. Not that they need any help anymore. But this is the first time in a long while that they've actually knowingly acknowledged something from their competition on screen. So expect at least 30 mentions of this from Excalibur and Tony Schiavone on Dynamite this Wednesday. I mean, you probably won't see CM Punk on that show, but you might have seen him last night if you were at the New Japan show. CM Punk has found himself back in the news as of late, as his injury rehab is nearly over and there are rumblings of him returning to All Elite Wrestling. Although Dave Meltzer has said that fences need to be mended between Punk and the Elite following what happened at All Out. And a new precedent appears to have been set backstage, as Thunder Rosa apologized to the AEW locker room for her actions last year during her title run. And now CM Phil has been spotted in the crowd for New Japan's Battle of the Valley, apparently not nursing an injured arm. He of course wasn't the only person and in attendance who likes wrestling, as local boy Dave Meltzer was there along with Impact Wrestling Scott Demore and former Quizzlemania no-shower No Way Jose. Fightful Slate report that Punk had inquired about attending the show about a month ago. CM Punk attending New Japan shows actually confirmed. Also at that show was fellow local lady Bailey, who was there to see the former Sasha Banks, now Mercedes Monet, win the IWGP Women's Championship from Kyrie. Grapsity's Righteous Reg tweeted that Bailey was originally hidden in the crowd via a lucha mask, but got far too into the match, so 
had to take it off. Several in attendance spotted her, including Talking Simpsons' Henry Gilbert, with this Twitter user saying she was acting like a proud mum during the bout, even being caught on camera starting a Monet chant. It also quite sweetly prompted a Bailey chant from the crowd when Monet hit a Bailey to belly for a near fall. Though it seems unlikely that Bailey wouldn't jump ship to New Japan if and when her WWE contract does expire, although that didn't stop any of the news in 2022, there is a New Japan man she could be interacting with in WWE soon. Last week, Jay White lost to Hikaleo at the beginning in Osaka in a Loser Leaves Japan match. It was thought that this would be Jay White's final time in New Japan Pro Wrestling. After all, he must now leave Japan where New Japan is. But it clearly wasn't definitive enough, as last night at Battle of the Valley, he lost to AEW's Eddie Kingston in a Loser Must Leave New Japan match. I'm starting to think, New Japan don't want you anymore, Jay. So where does that leave Switchblade now? As mentioned earlier, Scott Demore of Impact Wrestling was at the show, who White is appeared with in the last year or so, and he had a couple of shots in AEW in 2022, beating Trent on an episode of Rampage and defending his title at Forbidden Door when he was IWGP Heavyweight Champion. So what about WWE? Fightful Select reported last week that WWE felt confident that they could land him, but we're told it's hardly guaranteed at this point. He added WWE sources have repeatedly confirmed that they have long had interest in Jay White, but that everything related to the possibility of him coming into the company is being kept very quiet. On the Elimination Chamber post-show review on Fightful, Sean Ross Sapp reiterated that he didn't know where White would end up, but that WWE were still very interested in him. Which is interesting as WrestlingNews.co reported that WWE were more interested in signing Kenny Omega than they were Jay White. Jumping back to WWE's Elimination Chamber and Sean Ross Sapp reported via Fightful Select that the finish of the Bobby Lashley-Brock Lesnar match was done because the storyline is going to continue but wasn't locked in for WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt had challenged the winner of that match on SmackDown but was not at Elimination Chamber in any capacity. SRS also notes that Brock Lesnar's ref spot this time was planned. He was not punished for the unplanned one at Royal Rumble. Speaking of planned spots and Montez Ford's injury in the United States Championship Chamber match was a work, as it was done to allow Logan Paul entry into the chamber to attack Seth Rollins. Sean Rossap reports that Montez Ford is not actually injured. The main event of the show took up the final hour, and speaking of the match on the post-show conference, Zayn spoke of the magic the Bloodline saga has provided, a storyline that has left fans hanging on every word, analyzing every facial expression, and now looking back, Zayn has spoken on the difficulty doing such things in this day and age, and even hinted that there is still more to come. He said the hardest thing to do in this age of content is to do something memorable, something that people are going to remember. Never mind in a week or two, that's hard enough sometimes on its own. But now I think with this bloodline thing, I think we've walked away from this story and it's not even done with so many memorable segments, TV segments that people will remember five, ten years down the road. Dave Meltzer had reported late last year that the Bloodline storyline plans were for Roman to face Owens at the Rumble, and then face Zayn at the Chamber, and then for KO and Sami to tag together against the Usos at WrestleMania, while Reigns will go on to face Cody Rhodes for the Undisputed Championship. And that would still seemingly be the direction going by last night's show, as Kevin Owens saved Zayn from a beatdown from Jimmy Uso and Roman Reigns. While Sami didn't enjoy the best homecoming, the same cannot be said for his fellow Canadian man, Edge. Wrestling for the first time in Montreal in 17 years, Edge teamed with his wife Beth Phoenix to beat Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. Edge beating Judgment Day, eh? There's a shocker. But there is a question mark hanging over the apparent retirement plans Edge has for himself. Last August, he told the Toronto crowd at a Raw event that next August, they would say goodbye to each other on that night. He also told the Nation Network in October that he wants to retire in Toronto. And at the Elimination Chamber press conference, he reiterated again that he wants to hang up his boots on home country soil. He said, I'm not really thinking about what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow, let alone what I'm going to do in five, six, seven, eight months from now. I will say, I would like it to be in Canada. Edge also used this press conference to set up a United States Championship match against Austin Theory at Raw tomorrow night. It is worth noting that it's been reported Edge had signed a three-year deal with WWE when he returned at the Royal Rumble in 2020, which would expire this year. And AEW's Dax Harwood noted on his podcast recently that the idea of FTR versus Edge and Christian is actually more of a possibility than people might know, despite three quarters of that lineup working for the other team. Edge is very close friends with Dax and Cash of FTR, even using their finish during
during the match last night. Brock Lesnar learns winner of him versus Lashley will face Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, immediately loses via DQ. Montez Ford frog splashes so high he gets tangled in elimination chamber ceiling. And oh, Canada, ref bumps everywhere. If you weren't so fragile, referees, maybe Sami Zayn would be champion now!